So, in today's video, I'm going to be upgrading my personal PC. The things I'll be upgrading is my CPU, my RAM, and my motherboard. Also, I've made two videos previously on my YouTube channel on upgrading my PC, but let's hope this one is much more higher quality for you. For a quick summary, here is my old PC case, and here is my brand new PC case, which is my up-to-date one at the moment. We also went from a 1660 Super to a 4070 Ti. Apart from that, let's actually get into the build. So right guys, we do have some boxes right here and as you see, we're going to be doing an unboxing. So we did get these recently and obviously we got the Vengeance RGB DDR5. So this is actually an AM5 for an AM5 motherboard and we do have a brand new CPU as well. Uh, we do have the Ryzen 9 7950X 3D and this is quite an expensive CPU. What else is in the box? So let me just take all this wrapping out. Here is the new AM5 motherboard. I paid like 360 pound for it, as you see. This is a ROG Strix X670EF gaming motherboard. So this is literally like the latest hardware for PCs. So as you can actually see, on the left, we do have the old CPU and here's the new CPU. So here's the old RAM. Here's the new RAM. So we're pretty much doing a massive upgrade. Here's the old motherboard that I'm gonna be taking out of my PC. Here's the new motherboard. And these are pre-existing parts I've already got. So I'm gonna be using this power supply to power all of the components. And I'm also, I've already got a 4070 Ti inside my computer. You can't really see it, but it's just roughly there. But here's the cord I'm gonna be using, the IQ H100i Elite Capel X. So let's get into the upgrade. So I firstly started off by taking the back of my PC case off by the screws. After I then started to take the cables out of my graphics card and then started to unscrew the screws to take my graphics card from the motherboard out by pressing the button and taking it from the motherboard. As you see, it's quite a nice graphics card from the look of it and also the fans look cool. I then started to unscrew the back panel from the case and as you see, it's very, very messy. I then started to unplug the cables from the commander core so I could then get access to the LCD screen. So I can then just pull it out from the front of the case and I can then get access to the CPU as you can see. After I then started to unscrew the CPU cooler from the top of the case, I then unrouted all of the cables from the CPU cooler and then pulled them out. I then continued to take off the CPU block from the motherboard by unscrewing the top screw and the bottom screw. I then took it off. After I then started to use an alcohol wipe to then wipe off the thermal paste from the CPU. I also wiped it off the cooler as well to make sure it's clean for when I install the new CPU in the new motherboard. I then started to take out the two RAMs from the motherboard by pressing the two buttons at the top of the motherboard. And then I then took them from the motherboard and as you see they look pretty cool. And then undid the retention arm on the motherboard and took out the CPU. Here's a Ryzen 5 5600X. I then unplugged the 24 pin and also the USB cables for the top of the case. Lastly I unplugged the CPU cables at the top left of the motherboard. I then took out the motherboard from the case by unscrewing all of the screws. Now time to get access to the M.2s. All I had to do is just unscrew the two screws on both of them so I can get access to the NVMEs. So this will then go into my new motherboard and this is where all my storage is stored now for the fun part it's time to unbox the cpu as you see it's a very very cool cpu this was very expensive and here is the ryzen 9 7950x 3d it's now time to install the new parts into the new motherboard so let's unbox the motherboard as you can see it's a very very good looking motherboard i'm going to start by installing the ddr5 32 gigabytes of ram and then push down the buttons to make sure i can then install the ddr5 ram by making sure it's equal on both sides and then pushing it down till it clicks in and then continue to do this with the second ram and by the way the ram only goes in one way so you can't really force it in it only goes in one way onto the motherboard it's now time to install the m.2s into the new motherboard i then took off the heat sinks from the motherboard so I can get access to them. As you see, I do have three slots, so I will buy a future one in the future. I only have two at the moment, but once I get a generation five M.2, my PC will boot up much faster and games will load up really quickly as well. It's now time to install the CPU into the socket. As you see, you wanna line the arrow up on the CPU with the arrow on the motherboard, and this is the only way it will go in. If you do it any other way, you could damage your motherboards so make sure the arrows are lined up after you want to close the lever 
push down the retention arm and you want to push it down until the CPU is then fully secured in the motherboard. Now that everything is on the motherboard, I can then put the new motherboard into the case by screwing all of the screws to make sure it's secured onto the case. And then I can then start to plug in all of the cables such as 24 pin, the type C cable and also the CPU cable as well. Now that that's done, I can then put the CPU cooler at the top and then start to assemble the CPU onto the actual motherboard. After I then took off the old CPU hooks, so I can then install the new ones because these hooks are like not as good as the new ones I got actually spread the thermal paste much more better. As you see, here is the new bracket and I also have to put the screws on all four corners of the motherboard as you can see. I then started to add thermal paste into the middle of the CPU. Some people do a P size shape and some people do like X's, but as you see here is enough thermal paste to actually fit on. Then put the CPU block over the four pins and make sure they all lined up and pushed it down. I then started to screw all four sides to make sure the thermal paste is spreading evenly. So you wanna do like a cross pattern method and this will actually help spread the thermal paste all over the CPU. As you see, I then started to do the cross pattern method to make sure the thermal paste is spreading equally. Now that's done, I can then put the LCD screen over the magnet so then I can put it back into place. I then plugged in the LCD screen back into the commander core and now it's time to install the graphics card. As you see, I just slot it into the motherboard. I can then plug in the pin, as you see from the power supply, and then start to screw the two screws in and now the graphics card is fully installed. Now that the PC is done, it's time to update the BIOS and this is gonna give the motherboard an update and let's see if it boots. Right, so the PC is now built. All we've got to do now is turn on the PC and test to see if it works, to see if we get a boot up on the monitor. So I'm now gonna turn it on. I haven't turned it on yet, so you're gonna see if it works or not. So as you see, the lights inside the PC are actually turning on. I'll show you right now. As you see, hopefully, and do we get a boot? BIOS is updating, as you see here. BIOS is updating. To prevent, do not shut down. Okay, here we go. So we do have a, a boot up. Oh, we have a boot up. We have a, we have a, there we go. New CPU installed. There we go. All good. It is all good. Press F1. And as you see, we're in the BIOS. Memory, here we go. So I believe I have how fast is this memory? It is 6,400 megahertz. So let's actually see. Let's actually bump this to 6,400. DDR5, save and exit, press OK. I also had to move the CPU header because it was in the wrong slot and that's probably why I was having like a little issues. Apart from that, it was all good. The PC is fully done and looks awesome. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.